This year marks the 22nd anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China. Despite Hong Kong being ranked one of the freest business hubs in the world, skepticism about its autonomy from Beijing has been growing, particularly among the younger generation. In June, they took to the streets to oppose a proposed bill designed to prevent Hong Kong from becoming a safe haven for fugitives. Since then, violence has dogged the protests, resulting in innocent people being hurt, public life disrupted and national symbols defaced. While condemning the use of extreme violence and vandalism, people are asking what's caused the surge in skepticism among young Hong Kong people about the one country, two systems, and what has to be done to heal the divide. Welcome to a special edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin, coming to you from the Chow Hotel in the heart of Beijing. We've invited three young people from Hong Kong who are living here on the mainland to share their stories. They are Anna Lo, a student at Tsinghua University, Vivian Ho, a former journalist now seeking her doctorate at Peking University here in Beijing, and James Liu, who pursued his master's degrees in Tsinghua University in Beijing and who now works in Shanghai. I'm also very pleased to be joined by Henry Ho, who is uh, chairman and uh, founder of the One Country, Two Systems Youth Forum, a think tank composed of young people from Hong Kong and the mainland. So the warmest welcome to all of you to this special edition. Now I'd like to start by asking Vivian to share with us your personal story. Exactly what brought you to come to study here on the mainland and uh, how long did you stay and what are you doing now? Actually, I moved to Hong Kong uh, with my family when I was four. And uh, after that, I decided to uh, pursue my uh, master's degrees and my PhD uh, the, uh, now. I think after especially I have been uh, living in Beijing uh, um, uh, almost uh, six years, I really find that is a very uh, different uh, view uh, give me to uh, observe what is happening in Hong Kong and what is happening in today's China. Yeah. How long have you spent on the mainland altogether so far? Uh, about maybe more than 10 years. More than 10 yes. years. And you plan to continue staying here to pursue your study in Peking University and then yes. after that do you have some idea where you're going to go, what you're going to do? I want to uh, uh, cherish this opportunity to continue to uh, live and uh, in Beijing mm -hmm. or in mainland because I want to know uh, how can we do uh, and uh, we can uh, estimate Hong Kong what is its roles and uh, what who uh, who am I am. So it makes you Kong. think about who you are, right? This yes. experience living in both places. Let me go to James. Um, I understand you already did your study here in Beijing, yes. and now you're working in Shanghai in the banking industry. What brought you from Hong Kong to, to mainland for in the first place, and why have you decided to work in, Hong, in Shanghai instead of going back to Hong Kong? Um, let me recall that, that why I decided to study the master in Beijing. I, mean, I remember that four years ago I was an exchange student at Qing Wen University. And then at the year I remember that the state council has proposed the, the policy of the mass entrepreneurship and innovation policies, which are uh, so fascinating me to come to China. To get, since at the, at the year I see lots of incubation centers, lots of uh, uh, funding in the marketing, I see lots of unicorns that spawn at the time, for example, DD, uh, Bidance, lots of uh, this kind of uh, fintech. Uh, Tech, technology company as well as the fintech company. As I see lots of opportunity in China and I consider to uh, pursue my studies uh, in, in Beijing and then to explore the opportunities. And after I graduate, I, I saw that uh, in financial, especially I decided to uh, work in financial sectors. I saw this as in China, lots of opportunities in, in China, especially in, in banking. It, by comparing with Hong Kong, we can see that uh, in, in, in China, we have a wide scope of clients, mm -hmm. different industry. For example, we can work on trade finance, uh, fintech, different different uh, product that we ha you haven't seen in Hong Kong. And also, we can have as a place an important role to support those kind of uh, private owned equity uh, POE firms to uh, support their development. Mm -hmm. 
I see. In this field. Oh, okay, so that's that's really interesting because people would imagine that Hong Kong, being the financial center in this part of the world or even worldwide, uh, actually there are still things where Hong Kong can even emulate on uh, from mainland's practice. Anna, let me go to you and share with us a, a little bit your story. Uh, you are still um, in your university yeah. period. I understand you're a uh, um, you're one year away from graduation. Yeah. Uh, what brought you to the mainland? How long have you stayed here? And uh, how are you feeling at this moment? Um, first of all, I myself, I have been, I was born and raised in Hong Kong, so I ha I, and I have family living in the US. So I've never lived in the mainland China before. Mm. And I was, actually, I was quite ashamed before that um, I know quite um, much about the United States. I know much about US, um, Hong Kong, but I know I barely know anything from my mother country, apart from books, apart from news. So I really want to know firsthand, like how is it to live or to be in mainland China? And is the news true? Is it, is it true that you cannot speak about anything you want in mainland China? They, I have a lot of skepticisms and this is why in the first place I chose to study in mainland China mm. and secondly why Tsinghua so I myself um, actually have had a diplomatic dream so in fact I've wanted to be a, become a diplomat for many years but um, so I think Beijing as the capital city of course is the best place to study if I would like to become a diplomat and Tsinghua came to me at that time um, they offered me with a really interesting major which is called the global environment environment program and is an engineering degree but it allows you to learn intercurriculum stuff for example economics and management and diplo uh, diplomacy and uh, it was a really new subject that was re which um, really attracted me so I chose to study um, this subject and I also got chances to you know work for the Chinese government last year mm -hmm. so it was a really brand new experience for me because at the same time I also have private sector experiences but yeah. Chinese government experience was definitely very refreshing for me. How long have you stayed on the mainland so far? Um, three years in three Beijing. Three years yes. and uh, so it was a big jump right from knowing very little yes. about the mainland to spending your entire life here, at Indeed. least for now. So Henry, before I go on and finding out more about these fascinating personal stories, tell us a little bit the trend that has been. How, how extraordinary or how normal it is for students in Hong Kong to come to mainland to per pursue their universities and even to stay here and pursue their careers? Um, our think tank, uh, One Country, Two Systems Youth Forum, has conducted two uh, studies on Hong Kong people working and studying in mainland. And uh, we've seen the trend that more and more Hong Kong students are pursuing their studies in mainland. Uh, around one in six Hong Kong people attended a university degree. I'm, talk I'm talking about degree level in the mainland. And, one and in six? One in six. So that's a, actually a fairly big proportion. Yes. Or Yes. Because you wouldn't imagine that there are so many students who are actually from Hong Kong are actually studying on the mainland. Now we have about 15,000 uh, Hong Kong students studying in mainland universities, uh, uh, annually up around 4,000. And most of them are in Guangdong province. Of course, we have those in, in Tsinghua China, yeah. and Beijing. Mm -hmm. But most of them are in Guangdong province and what we call Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, According to your observation, is the trend growing? I mean, are there more students coming to the mainland study or has it been steady over the years? The trend is definitely growing because since 2012, Hong Kong students can use their Hong Kong uh, exam results to apply directly to uh, about 110 universities in the mainland before they need to uh, uh, attend a certain exams. But now they can use their uh, existing results. so. Uh, I understand many students, they uh, will apply to mainland universities and then when they got the offers, they may, they may decide they will stay in Hong Kong or go to mainland mm. or overseas. Mm -hmm. So the trend is actually growing. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Uh, what was the biggest obstacle, let's say, that you had to overcome while coming to the mainland to study? And once you get over that, how has the overall experience been? Maybe James? I think the first thing I have to uh, face is uh, the language barriers. Since my, my Mandarin is not good, uh, and second, I think the the weather, the weather issue. I think that as, as a Hong Kong way, you feel very cold in here. And thirdly, I think that the 
the student culture is different. I think the student in here, so they, they work very hard. And then as, as uh, Hong Kong student, you will feel uh, uh, stressful, and you have to put more uh, effort uh, in your study. So I think this is a the free cultural st shock that which has cost me, mm. uh, make me think this is obstacles at the mm. time. Yeah, but now you feel much more comfortable after you are able to speak Mandarin better and... I think that I, I embedded in this <laughs> environment already. <I> think. <laughs> You're embedded. <laughs> meaning, meaning you got used to it, although you can't really do it as the, the, the mainlanders do or... I, or maybe I can, I can say that I even do better than, than yeah. the local, local I say that. <laughs> Vivian, do you have similar experience? I mean, when you first came here, what were the biggest barriers and how did you get over it? Mm, I think uh, compared with the uh, um, barriers, I more uh, gained the benefits um, because the different experience let me feel I like I have the double identity. Uh, in my daily life, if my friends have negative comments on Hong Kong, I will uh, I would want to argue with, with them mm. uh, uh, instinctively. Um, but by contrast, if my friends have some bad comments on mainland, I also feel I want to defend it. I think it's a very, um, very special experience in my life. And this gives me the, uh, the ability to uh, think outside the box and uh, I can stand on others' shoes to understand what has happened and uh, uh, the culture uh, and the backgrounds. It let me feel uh, I can see the more ex uh, difference between the uh, two. So basically, coming to the mainland to study give you a perspective that you were not able to have if you would have yes. never come to, come to the mainland I to study. If I always live in Hong Kong, I yeah. think I don't have this ability mm. to stand on others. But perspective. what is the problem that, uh, that sometimes people would have very negative understanding, he, people here on the mainland would have negative impression mm -hmm. of what's mm -hmm. happening in Hong Kong and the other way around? What is wrong in your eyes? Many, uh, most of people knowing one thing is just from some news and uh, uh, I think it's a partial perspective or partial understanding uh, because uh, in the media world it's not the, all the true things what is happening in mm. the true uh, environment. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You have to come and see it for yourself. Anna. You are definitely one of these people, right, who are very mm. open-minded about coming to a, see a different place, especially a place that you've heard much about but in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Was it a courageous decision for you to take to jump into this cold water <laughs> and face the, the, the very uncertain, very unknown and unpredictable reality? Mm -hmm. uh, what was that experience like? I would really want to share more on this because in, uh, three years ago I was um, choosing between two offers. One was from HKU. Uh, it was a really good offer in Hong Kong people's eyes. It was international business and global management. And one, one offer was, for, was from Tsinghua. So my family actually did not quite support me from, um, to come to Beijing because they, there are many uncertainties that they're unsure of. Um, but in the end, I, I really would like to um, study outside of this small city. I really would like to see firsthand what's really happening because I think it's always good to be skeptical about everything unless you really feel it, you really see it by your own eyes. So right now, uh, my family are feeling much better because I'm telling them, I, I would try to explain to them somehow that it's not really like what you, you think about. What, would, what example would you give? Would you give a daily <laughs> um, anecdote or something that happens in your life, in your study, that you find is totally different from what you foresee and that you had to explain to your friends and family in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong people's eyes, have we that everyone talks about politics in class and everywhere? Uh -huh. But in fact, in Tsinghua, um, it's not like everyone talks about politics. We want to talk, or we, we talk about politics when we want to, or when we are concerned about. So it's not like all WeChat or all the social media are talking about politics. So it is different from Hong Kong people's eyes. So in in fact, in the other way around, I think in Hong Kong, many people talk about politics, almost all, because when we look at the social media, everyone was talking about it. So there, there's um, this is really a big. Um, difference hmm. to my parents. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that shared? Is that feeling or impression shared by you, James or Vivian, when you are 
uh, t explaining live on the mainland to your friends and family back in Hong Kong. What was the biggest uh, story that you had to explain? Uh, based on my experience in my uh, in school and my working environment, I think that they are focused on their work. They are hardworking. They are hardworking. They are hardworking. They are they are, they are focused on their jobs. They just not only uh, just get the job done, but they will, they would like to get a, the job done it well. Mm. So, but but uh, uh, my impression is that people in Hong Kong are like that, uh, and <laughs> because we think that Hong Kong people work so hard, right? So many people live in this very small place, and you're always just rushing ahead and get and being very professional. That's my understanding of the work ethics in Hong Kong. But you were saying the Hong Kong people have the impression about people on the mainland being hardworking. Is that a good impression or a bad impression, I, I, by I the way? I think that uh, it's, a, it's a good good impression. I think that since lots of foreign films come to China, that those cultures has also affected lo local uh, mainland people. Mm. Yeah. We're yeah. talking about work ethics, right? I really want to add on that because there are many, many mainland tourists that come to Hong Kong and Hong Kong people usually have a bad impression on them because they're not behaving well in the public. For example, they eat in underground and also maybe some of them would, would pee on streets and would uh, throw away rubbish on streets. And my friends have been asking, like, so is that true in Beijing? But in fact, in Tsinghua, everyone's behaving so well. So like we don't, <laughs> we don't put, do that. Like, we, don't <laughs> we don't dump do rubbish kind of whatever we want. Mm. And on buses, on metro, I always see children or youngsters that would give their seats for elderly people, for pregnant women. So I think this is really a matter of um, the sample. So maybe some of the mainlanders, they come to Hong Kong, they're not behaving well, but there are many mainlanders that are actually behaving very well. But in it's their daily magnified lives. Mm. because yes, of indeed. the media attention. Yeah, yeah I Henry. think in many cases, the misunderstanding between Hong Kong and many people are due to the social media. In social media, we tend to look at photos, videos, uh, instead of uh, articles or an analytical you know, you know, comments. So people tend to react very instinctively. But, uh, but as I have seen many of the students in mainland China, after they uh, stay and live in mainland China, they, they, are, they, they will know more about the uh, achievements and also the limitations of mainland China. I think that's better than just looking at your cell phones and, and, and only those social media information. It's very interesting you, you mentioned the word limitations because I think a lot of people just do not have the understanding of the scale of the country, the complexity yeah. of uh, bringing any changes to this country, although we must not be apologetic for not making things better, but yeah. it is a very complicated system and, and, and I think a lot of people lose sight of that. Henry, what is your understanding of uh, the, the, the necessity to see things really uh, according to the circumstances. I think China is such a big country. We are we're having uh, one-fifth of the world's population and the regional disparity is really huge. So we have uh, very you know, civilized or highly educated people, you know, uh, maybe many of them in Beijing, but we also have rural areas. So I think at least to me, I've lived in mainland China for several years and I've traveled all around. I think uh, we need to to be more to be more understanding and and also compare with like China in one decade two decades ago we have made made, made a lot of progress uh, progress mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but a lot of progress will need to be made but a lot of time yeah, will also right. be necessary let's talk about your time in the future and I'm very interested uh, Vivian you already talked about you probably wanting to continue to stay mm -hmm. on the mainland and pursue your career what is the consideration behind that what gives you the hope that uh, you will be able to pers build your personal career and develop yourself better here? Mm, I think, uh, personally speaking, because uh, I want to be, a, a, be a, a scholar, so I want to uh, uh, use my uh, advantage because I know both uh, Hong Kong and uh, uh, mainland. I want to do some research and uh, uh, let uh, the more people know what uh, uh, especially what is happening in Hong Kong and what is happening in China. What kind of research you would like to do? I'm doing some uh, research about the visual uh, rhetoric and it will help uh, uh, the different people from the different backgrounds to understand each other. Maybe without the uh, translation, uh, we just uh, use some common uh, 
common uh, uh, common cognate nation can uh, understand each other just uh, uh, use the uh, visual uh, samples. Yes, that's very interesting. Is it because of your double identity that yes. you just mentioned that you want to help people understand each other in a different way than words or languages or media, but you want to do it through visual rhetoric? Yes, because I uh, I noticed that after I have been living in mainland more than ten years, I see more clearly about the um, difference between each other. But I think this difference will bring also bring the benefits for uh, for China. Uh, this benefits. Uh, I think this difference uh, will maybe we want must we must to commit it. And we must look at it squarely, mm. um, because yeah. this will. Uh, uh, I think the difference will last uh, for uh, many years, and uh, we need to patient to understand it, mm -hmm. and we cannot uh, ignore this difference, mm -hmm. and uh, we maybe we can't uh, expect it, expect Hong Kong will come the uh, similar or same. Uh, city with other uh, mainland cities, just like Beijing or Shanghai, hmm. but because it um, actually has the long, uh, unique hist history and yeah. the um, cultures, it can't change and can't deny. Mm -hmm. Very important point, James. Your plan for your immediate future? You want to go back to Hong Kong anytime soon, or you want to continue to explore the job opportunities here? Mm. Since Hong Kong is a lot of uh, clients, for example, from the SOE, the POE from, main, from, from mainland, if you have equipped with this experience, I think that you work very well in, in the future. So I, I prefer to work both places mm -hmm. in, in the future. Yeah. Is it going to be possible, do you think, given the kind of convenience or uh, progress in facilitating integration between the two sides, do you think it's going to be easy for you to travel, to, to, ba to be based in both places? Oh, I think that uh, the state council uh, in, re in recent years has done uh, to try the utmost to uh, do this kind of integration on the on the ID cards, for example, the travel permits. We can, uh, for example, in the, in the train station, we can use uh, the travel permit to, to uh, use a self-service machine to take mm -hmm. the, the ticket. We can use a self-service machine in airport to uh, same, work as same as the lo local uh, main, mainland people. Mm -hmm. So I think that the, go the government has worked. Uh, Pay a lot of effort in in on yeah. traveling, as well as the hospital, the banking. They are more open to the uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, as well as the people in Macau. So I think that the government has, has uh, done the best on it, and it is mm -hmm. still making uh, still ongoing, making progress. Yeah, it's good to hear. It's good to hear. Yeah, Anna, um, your so you you said you wanted to be a diplomat, mm -hmm. and to be a diplomat, I guess for China you would have to work uh, on the mainland. Um, yes, Would it be indeed. like that? Yeah. Um, so, in fact, um, I personally met with a foreign minister in one special occasion, and I, I was saying that there was no Hong Kong resident have ever become a diplomat. And uh, right now, there may be limitations, but I think in the future, we don't know. Like, I, I think the future is very uncertain, and I'm open to the opportunities. And uh, right now, in the short term, I, I actually love both Beijing and Hong Kong, both of my homes. So I'm very flexible whether mm. I, where, where, where I work. I've also been to quite a lot of countries, and I'm also open to those countries. But in fact, right now, Beijing is still my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I really wish to stay in Beijing for, for the coming years. Are there, are there any limitations? Because you, after all, uh, from the special administrative region, for you to become a diplomat working for the Chinese central government, are there any written <laughs> barriers or not, or is it? How do you know, Anna? Mm, I was because I myself worked for the worked for some sort of negotiation team representing China, mm -hmm. and right now there is also some government officials from Hong Kong in the negotiation team, mm. but they might not be the core members yet mm -hmm. in the negotiation team. But I mentioned yet, I emphasize yet because I think there are so many opportunities. I think everything can happen because um, our foreign minister also encouraged me. He was saying that I should still try my best because no one knows what will happen. Who knows? Yeah, Indeed. one day you might you might really become a diplomat. Harry. Uh, actually, I would like to add a few words on Anna Stream. Uh, first of all, uh, Hong Kong people can can help in national or inter even international diplomacy. Uh, see our former director of health 
uh, Dr. Chen Feng Fu Zhen. Yeah, uh, he, she Dr. has Chen. been the she has been the chief of WHO for many years, and uh, to become a dipl diplomat, first you have to become a civil servant. And I understand that the Greater Bay Area plan has facilitated Hong Kong people to apply for civil servants. And our think tank has also made some suggestions on this. We all know that to become a civil servant is extremely difficult for all mainland people. Mm -hmm. But we can't say, OK, uh, if you're Hong Kong people, you have, 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 express have an express lane. Yeah. And, and that's not fair. Mm -hmm. So what we proposed uh, was, was to uh, hire more Hong Kong people on the work that involves Hong Kong. For example, we have many government departments, universities, or and, and institutions are dealing with uh, Hong Kong and Macau affairs and they would need people who are both good in English and Cantonese and know the both places. So I think this may be the way to go. Yes. And we think for civil servants we could also try some contracts, maybe some contracts for Hong Kong people to have a feel about yeah. uh, the, uh, how, how it is in working in Chinese government and then for them to further decide yeah. uh, what's, what's the next steps. Time is running out, but I really do want to get your very quick uh, understanding or expectation for the future of Hong Kong. Because right now in the news, we're seeing very negative, very dark images. But are you worried at all that Hong Kong is going to come back to normal and continue to thrive in the future? Very briefly, Harry. I think Hong Kong is now having some difficulties. And uh, many people, in particular young people, are not very happy with the current situation. But for me, I think I'm still confident. We, Hong Kong has, uh, has a unique system. Uh, and Hong Kong, uh, now we will uh, participate in the Greater Bay Area Plan, where Hong Kong people would have more opportunities in their career development. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I'm still optimistic. And I hope that you know, the difficulties will go away very yeah. soon. Yeah. Would you like to add something just to wrap up about I I have confidence um, because I think there is no alternative future for Hong Kong. Just uh, but just but uh, um, in integrate uh, with China. Integrate. Yeah. So I, I that's why I choose to stay in mainland in my future. I'm worried that Hong Kong's economy would be affected, but I think Hong Kong is special to the whole China. It's not just because of the economy, but, but it's people, but it's special culture. So sure. I, I think um, Hong Kong still means a lot. And of course, it's my home, so I'm confident that it will become back to normal very soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James? So there's a few words. I, be, I believe uh, Hong Kong peoples. And then I, I believe that we will back to the white track shortly in a, yeah. in a maybe in the near future, I think. Okay. We all have that same wish, I think. That's why we're here. Well, we have to wrap it up. Thank you so much, Thank Harry you. Ho, um, President and uh, Founder and Chairman of the One Country, Two Systems Youth Forum, Anna Lo, a student uh, uh, studying here at Tsinghua University, Vivian Ho, now seeking her doctorate at Peking University, and James Liu, who is now working in Shanghai. And with that, we come to this very special edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin, coming to you from the Chow Hotel here in the heart of Beijing. Thanks for watching. You can go on Facebook and Twitter and look for our handle, The Point with Alex. Go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.